guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you can hear any background noise, that's because my sister decided that she's going to do work in my room today. Um, but this video is after a few requests to do that made no sense. Um, basically, I'm just going to be talking about the structure of the Cambridge Med course at Cambridge. Okay, the structure of the medicine course at Cambridge, um, I'll cover stuff like the preclinical, clinical split, um, patient interactions, the modules that we cover, the term system, exams, etc, etc. Basically, as comprehensive a uh, guide, not really a guide, but as comprehensive as I can get it, because I have had a few questions. Um, about this in the past. I'll make sure to put timestamps in the description box so that you can go to whichever part of the video you want to learn more about so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Um, and yeah, before we get on to the video, I wanted to say that this video is very kindly sponsored by Blackstone Tutors. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you might know that I talked a lot about like doing videos for a project and whatever. Basically, I was making UCAT videos for Blackstone Tutors. So they have a whole UCAT video series on their website where they go through each of the different sections of the UCAT. There are tips in there, how to approach the questions. There's loads of worked examples and like just basically really useful techniques that I wish I had known when I was doing my UCAT. And I know because I filmed the videos, so I know what's in them. Um, so yeah, if you're taking your UCAT this year and you were looking for something along those lines, um, then I will leave the links to Blackstone Tutors in the description box. You can go check those out and it means that you get to see more of my face, which I'm not sure anyone wants that, but my sister is <laughs> rolling her eyes. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking now. Um, do check out Blackstone Tutors. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video and I am going to get onto it. So. I've got the notes in front of me because literally there are pages and pages, but first of all we'll talk about the kind of split between clinical and preclinical. So the first three years, it's a six year course, the first three years are your preclinical years, so the first two years you basically do the same content, everyone does the same content, um, it's just medical sciences. Your third year is your intercalation, so you get to kind of specialize in something it's not really specializing it's also not clinical at all um and yeah i'll get onto that a bit more later and then your final three years are your clinical years just a little bit more about the third year intercalation thing because i know that trying to find information about this online was a nightmare um but basically you can choose to do a subject for a year, pretty much anything you want to do, to be honest. Most people stick to natural science courses, um, but you can do humanities, you can do sociology and stuff like that, you can do engineering, um, you can pretty much management, do whatever you really want. Um, it just depends on like talking to your director of studies and course organisers and whatever. Um, but most people do stick to natural sciences. You can do a project or a dissertation um, within the natural science realm. So there are loads of different subjects. You can do stuff like pathology, um, neuro, genetics, the list goes on. There's quite a bit to choose from, um, but you can either do a project in one single subject or you can do a dissertation. And in that case, you get to pick a major subject and a minor subject. So on top of all the normal exams, you've got either project or dissertation. And just a little bit about the allocation process as well, because I think someone asked me. Basically, I think you would normally put your choices in around Easter term of second year. Um, and then they're based on your second year grades, so they rank you and then that's how you get allocated. So you get to choose one, two and three what subjects you want to do. And if subjects are oversubscribed, they have a cutoff point. About a quarter of people um, don't actually get allocated a subject the first time round. So then there's a second round. You can either stick with the choices that you already have or choose different ones if you want to. And then eventually you get allocated something. And I think most people do get something that they actually want to study so and then the clinical years obviously I can't really speak much about that because I'm not there yet I should have probably mentioned this at the start but I'm a second year well I'm finishing my second year I would have been finished but 
exams are in September. So, um, but yeah, I think you just start on placements, obviously, um, in the hospital and GPs, and you do soft skills training. Um, so from what I found online, fourth year is supposed to be like core clinical practice. So you have clinical methods um, and placements in GP, eMERGE, elective surgery and research. Fifth year is specialist clinical practice. So placements in maternity, neuro, mental health, specialist surgeries and other aspects of medicine like cardio, etc. And then sixth year is applied clinical practice. So from what I've gathered, it's basically just building on what you've done in those first two clinical years. So placements in senior medicine, eMERGE, surgery, GP, all that kind of stuff. So that's clinical pretty much in a nutshell from what I can tell you. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the modules that you do in first and second year because I know that some people might want to know. Um, I have filmed this video before and I went into great detail about each module and then realized that I have 50 minutes of footage. So if you have any questions about anything I say in this video and you want to know more, just leave it in the comments and I will reply to you. But basically in first year you have um, MIMS, which is molecules, they all have very silly acronyms, <laughs> but um, MIMS, which is molecules in medical science. So that's biochem, HOM, which is homeostasis. Basically it's just physiology, FAB, functional architecture of the body, which is anatomy, um, and then there are two smaller modules, which are SECI, so that is Social and Ethical Context of Health and Illness, I think, which is just ethics. And then ISBM, which is Introduction to the Scientific Basis of Medicine or something along those lines. And that's basically statistics and epidemiology. And then in second year, your main modules are MODA, so Mechanisms of Drug Action, that's Pharmacology. BOD is Biology of Disease, which is Pathology. NHB is neurobiology and human behavior, so just neuro, and HR is human reproduction, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then you have a smaller module, which is HNA, which is head and neck anatomy. All of these modules have lectures. Firstly, talking a little bit about the first year modules. So for biochem, you also have practicals. Um, you don't have a lot of them, but they're actually really fun. Like you get to use some high tech stuff and like, yeah. There, in my opinion, I don't know. Um, and MIMS is also the only subject that has PBL. So it has a very small PBL component because I think Cambridge had to include one. Um, so they put it in one module and basically you just do two separate presentations on different topics um, and like as a group and that's it. Um, then HOM, you've got practicals as well as your lectures, um, which are a lot more regular and you also have histology included in the physiology module, which is pretty much just taught through practicals, like looking through microscopes and stuff. Anatomy is one which is a bit different, so it's mainly taught through dissections. Um, so you're actually doing the dissecting and there's like a manual and stuff of pretty much everything that you need to learn and the lectures are a little bit more supplementary but they do still have a lot of extra information in them, especially embryology, but the main bulk of the anatomy is taught through dissections. And then your ethics is basically just like 10 lectures and you have a few seminars as well and your stats is also just 10 lectures so they're really really small modules comparatively oh yeah and i wanted to say that in anatomy they're trying to make it a little bit more clinical like clinical applications but it is mainly like pure anatomy and then with regards to second year modules pharmacology you have some practicals as well but they're not really too bigger deal I don't think. It's mainly to practice data analysis after you've done the experiment but the data analysis does get taught in the lectures as well. I believe that's the point of the practicals. I don't. If I'm wrong then we'll find out. Um, but pathology you have pretty regular practicals. You've got histopathology in them. Sometimes you do experiments like gram staining. Um, sometimes you're just working through like modules on a computer and stuff so it really varies. Um, NHB, you have a few kind of physio neurophysiology practicals, um, but mainly you also have a massive bulk of neuroanatomy within this module, which could really be its own separate little module, but it's not, um, which is taught similarly to um, head and neck anatomy, which I'll get onto in a little bit. Um, it's basically through prosections. 
um, and it has its own little manual with loads of information. It is, it does relate quite closely to what you go through in lectures in Neuro, but it's still a lot. Um, and then human reproduction is taught pretty much just through lectures. You have three histology sessions within that as well. Um, and then HNA is a follow-up to FAB in first year. Basically, it's just your head and neck anatomy. And in first year, you do everything else. Um, and that is taught through prosections again. So you're not actually doing the dissecting yourself. You're just looking at things that have been dissected. Um, and you also have lectures to go alongside that, but there's not as many because it is a little bit of a smaller module, even though it's still very detailed. On top of all of this, you have supervisions, obviously, because it's Cambridge. Um, these are at college level. So what you do in those depends on what supervisors you have. Um, everything else is done at a university wide level. So everyone else does the same thing. Um, since it's a traditional course, it's really mainly just independent work. Like you do work with partners and practicals and stuff like that, but um, the only group work you have is that PBL bit in MIMS. Um, and I mean, it's up to you what you'd prefer. Like for me, I thought I wouldn't really like PBL, which was confirmed by the fact that MIMS PBL wasn't my favorite. Um, but yeah, if you think that you'd prefer to do like problem solving in groups and whatever, then, the Cambridge course is probably not for you. You might be wondering whether you get to see patients in the first three years, and the answer is yes, you do to an extent. So um, they have this group of modules called Preparing for Patients. Um, so they have four subsections of this, pretty much. Um, you've got A, B, C, and D. Shocking. Um, so PFPA is done in first year. You basically have two visits with patients in a GP surgery. Um, PFPB is done in a hospital, but it's pretty much the same sort of thing. Um, I think you get to talk to the patients longer, like get a fuller history. Um, and then PFPC is done between second and third year in the summer. And that is kind of complementary alternative medicine. You have to organize that yourself. And PFPD is usually following a pregnant lady um, so that you get like continuity of care. I mean, there's not a lot there for an entire year but like you do get to talk to some patients to remember that you are actually doing medicine um and you pretty much just have to write a report at the end of it reflecting on your um experience of that section of the module um what you think could have gone better when you talk to patients what you learned from the patients etc etc um and it's not graded but you do have to pass it if you don't pass it you can't do the clinical years so I thought I'd squeeze in here really quickly the term system at Cambridge because I know that it's a little bit different to in other unis um, so you've got three terms Michaelmas, Lent and Easter each term is eight weeks long the weeks start on a Thursday which is a little bit weird um, and I think the main difference is that the last term is like the same length as the other two so for medicine you do still get taught content in the final term right before your exams which is a little bit annoying but holidays in between the term are like five to six weeks basically the general gist is that terms are like really hectic and crazy and like you can't like you can't keep up um and then you use your holidays they're not actually really holidays you're supposed to be like consolidating revising etc um, during those and this is all obviously true for the preclinical part um, I think in clinical you get a lot less holiday from what I've seen online um, which makes sense and of course I have to talk about exams because what is uni without exams am I right um, so exams in medicine take place mid Easter term and you also have your SETI and ISBM exams in first year at the end of Lent term literally on the very last day and your HNA exam in second year also at the end of the term. Depending on your college you'll most likely definitely also have mocks but these are just for your supervisors um, so like they don't count towards anything usually if you're like struggling then you'll just go talk to your DOS. The exams that you sit depend on each module um, except for ethics and stats which I'll talk about in a minute. You basically have essays for each module which go towards your tripos 
and you have a second MB component for each module, which is basically second MB is what you have to pass to be able to do clinical years. These are exams that you will have to resit if you fail them the first time. Um, and they're usually multiple choice papers, the practical papers, um, and then because it's Cambridge, you have essays, which don't count towards second MB, so you can fail your essays and you don't have to resit them and it doesn't really matter. The only thing that they count towards is your tripos. So tripos is the Cambridge grade pretty much. Um, and it's 50% essays, 50% the second MB papers, um, which gives you like the class of your degree for that year. So like it's good to do well, but the essays aren't like the end of the world. Um, Sechi and Isbum are smaller courses, so they are only second MB and they have, Sechi was just two essays I think and Isbum was a really short multiple choice paper and I thought it was worth mentioning that it's the same content being covered in both second MB and essay exams apart from maybe the practical stuff which is just tested in the practical exams but yeah. So I thought I'd finish off by going through like the degree because it is a little bit confusing and I don't even think I understand it <laughs> fully but basically so you leave with your MBCHB which is your degree in medicine after the first three years you get a BA degree um, your first two years you're getting your second MB qualifications and then you get your final MB parts one two and three in years four five and six to be able to then get your MBCHB thing which is what I understand from the whole situation but you know if anyone wants to correct me feel free um but yeah that's pretty much everything that I could think about I know that this video was very rushed but I know that no one wants to sit through 50 minutes of me talking about Cambridge's medicine course so if you have any other questions do put them in the comments um I will link a useful resource that I found on the internet in the description box you can go have a read of that if you want to find out um, stuff more in detail than I could cover it in this video. Um, once again do check out Blackstone Tutors I will have their website linked in the description box for their UCAT preparation course um, and yeah subscribe for more medicine uni fun videos um, like this video if you thought it was useful or you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.